If you're a Bigfoot enthusiast like myself, then the 1967 Robert Patterson camera footage probably started everything for you, just as it did for me. However, what many people don't know are the Native American legends that have gone back many centuries. In this video, I want to explore what the Native Americans called Sasquatch, Bigfoot, in different regions of our country, where their stories were commonplace in their tribes. For instance, many years ago, in what is now known as Washington County, Pennsylvania, a creature was known as the Dusk Man. This Sasquatch-type creature was reputed to be one of the fastest of the Sasquatch family, able to outrun a white-tailed deer. Many tribes in the area, and later European settlers, reported sightings, predominantly at sunset or dusk, hence its name. Native American parents would tell their children the story of the Dusk Man to keep them inside at night. The legend was mainly tied to the Appalachian Mountain region, yet similar stories reached all the way to the western part of the country. Some tribes embraced this creature as part of their natural surroundings, while others saw the Sasquatch as a cannibalistic killer, similar to the Wendigo, speaking of abductions when food was scarce, or attacks for food and rations. However, for the most part, Native American tribes lived in harmony with these creatures. In North Carolina, there was a Sasquatch that natives called Tsulkalu, which translates to the slanted-eyed giant. However, its most common name is the Cherokee Devil, known for being one of the greatest hunters in the forest. Some Native Americans even said it had mind-controlling powers, and making eye contact with it would change a person forever. Another claim was its ability to become invisible, possessing some sort of magical powers. One legend suggests that the Cherokee Devil became invisible due to a lack of trust, or a broken deal between itself and the surrounding tribe members. In the Kentucky region, there were many encounters attributed to the landscape, which was surrounded by mountain ranges, peaks, and hollers, low-lying areas, gullies, or riverbeds. This made it a great habitat for multiple tribes of Sasquatch living in the area, known by different names such as the Wild Man. This creature was known for being aggressive, very powerful, unafraid of human interaction, and related to another clan of creatures called the Midnight Whistler. The Whistler was said to be a great hunter, active in the late hours after midnight, with black fur and green glowing eyes like a cat's, enabling it to hunt at night. The Hoopa Indians spoke of their Sasquatch, referred to as the Oma. They described it as having a whistle-like howl for communication, and being fiercely protective of their land, often guarding it against outsiders or other Bigfoot clans. Later settlers described this whistle as being akin to a train whistle. West Virginia had many Sasquatch sightings and interactions, with the creature being named Yahoo. This name evolved over time as the locals heard screams from the forest that sounded like Yahoo which was the Sasquatch's way of communicating, either to locate each other or to warn of danger. One of the Native American tribes, the Shawnee, referred to the Yahoo as Yao in their Kentucky region. An interesting side story is that Daniel Boone claimed to have killed one in the surrounding areas of West Virginia, which, if true, is quite unfortunate. In Ohio, we have the legend of the Grassman, known for being one of the largest members of the Sasquatch family. The Grassman averages about 8 feet tall and weighs over 600 pounds. It has a strong smell, much like the skunk ape of Florida, and is typically in a foul mood, being the most aggressive member of the Sasquatch family. It shows no fear of humans and would approach homesteads and camps, with a family actually being attacked in the 1970s, though sightings date back to the 1700s. Native American tribes used to leave food out for the grassmen to maintain peace, calling them the wild ones of the woods, a practice that still continues today among Bigfoot researchers. 
some Native American tribes in the Mid-Atlantic believed in a creature called the Raven Mocker, a shape-shifting creature similar to the Wendigo or other skinwalkers. This creature is deeply embedded in Cherokee folklore, and like most shape-shifting beings, could transform into anything. It was commonly accounted as an older person coming to rob another's life, but some Native American elders also believed it could shape-shift into a Bigfoot-like creature to trick them. The legend of Bigfoot, also known as Sasquatch, remains a fascinating topic for many people. Enthusiasts and researchers continue to explore and document encounters and evidence related to this elusive creature. The work of individuals like David Polites has investigated numerous sightings and collected physical evidence adds to the ongoing intrigue. Polites, well known for his involvement with the North American Bigfoot search, has dedicated significant time and resources to investigate Bigfoot sightings. His book, The Hoopa Project, details his extensive two-year investigation on the Hoopa Valley Indian Reservation in California. By interviewing hundreds of witnesses and utilizing forensic artistry to create sketches based on their descriptions, Polites has solidified the belief among many that Bigfoot is more than just a myth. Through his efforts, Polites has amassed a collection of hair and bone samples, which he intends to submit for scientific review. Such dedication highlights the blend of folklore, contemporary encounters, and scientific curiosity that keeps the legend of Bigfoot alive. Believers and skeptics alike are drawn to the mystery of Bigfoot. Whether seen as a tangible phenomenon or a cultural legend, the stories and investigations surrounding Bigfoot continue to captivate the imagination and fuel ongoing research and debate. This enduring interest suggests that the legend of Bigfoot is indeed here to stay.